Welcome to the Spin Whiz Comic Show Whoa. from Raleigh, North Carolina. Join us for exclusive interviews with the publishers, bringing you the newest titles in indie comics, web comics, movies, and more. No way, way. And now here's your host, Jeff Palumbo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spin Whiz Comic Show. I know it's been a day or two. Don't be upset. Last time I was on, I played video games. It's okay. We were playing Call of Duty. We were playing some Team Fight Tactics. People got in here. Um, Draskia actually came in and raided us. It was fantastic. But tonight, we are back to normal schedule. We have somebody on the show tonight that was on about, I'm going to say two and a half months ago or so. I could look back in my record, but it's like two and a half months ago. Um, he... Oh, thank you there, Shot. Ten Shot. Appreciate it. Um, this dude is uh, making a comic called Black Project, and I'm going to have him talk about it more. The Kickstarter's up. I wanted to have him on again. We're going to do... He and I have a... We like Star Wars. We like gaming. We like nerding out. It, I don't know where this interview is going to go. I'm not going to lie to you. Last time we were on, we had a great time. Um, he is actually going to be one of the four people on a Star Wars panel that, that we're going to have on in the upcoming weeks. It's going to be him, um, who is Bulent uh, Hassan. Uh, it's going to be Dre Daniels, and then we have a fourth person coming. I'm the third person, or the first, or the fourth. Depends on how you want to do things. Um, and then we'll have another person in here. So um, the young lady we had coming in has dropped out for um, business reasons, so we're trying to fill the gap. Anyway. You guys don't care about that. But for right now, I'm going to bring in Buell and Hassan at part of the show. Now, I we've been talking back and forth because we're, we're friends outside of this. We can we shoot the shit all the time, and it's fantastic. I'm going to try to give him, like, a very uh, – usually I just say what their name and I bring him in, but I'm going to try to do something different tonight and give him, like, a uh, – like, you know how the boxers, when the boxers come in, the guy that announces it? Uh, he has like the deep voice and welcome to the main event. I'm going to try to give one of those to actually say his name like that. Um, just so he likes me more because I, I want him when he's huge and popular, I want him to remember me and, uh, I want to make him happy too. So, um, we'll do some, uh, we'll, we'll talk about his project, but, uh, I want him to talk more about it. He is already on the site. There'll be links in a moment. Don't sweat it. Uh, if you are new and you're not watching this on Twitch live, but you're watching it on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast on YouTube, the links are the below on podcast. We've got them all over the place. Find us spinwiscomics.com. We're not going anywhere. We're only getting bigger, which is great, which is why Bulent is here. But uh, let me bring him in just in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Tonight, in the white corner, I'm going to say, let me bring that back, in the black corner, hashtag, because it's it's, pro, it's black project, I just thought it'd be cool like that, um, he's the creator and owner of Crazy Pen, Pencil, wait, wait a minute, I'm going to get it right, <clears throat> of Crazy Pencil Comics, Bulent Oh wow! I cannot believe that I actually kept it that long. My yeah, wife, it, my wife is probably it, upstairs, like, "What in the <laughs> sweet god were you doing?" She's, you know, dialing nine one one, thought, think I'm having a stroke or something. Yeah, my wife, my wife's. If I were to do that, my wife would be like, "What are you doing to wake the kid?" I'm waiting for the text. I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't get, I didn't get it yet. I tried to okay. soundproof this room as much as possible, but. It, it, my voice carries. It's just one of those deeper voices that just rumbles through. So, uh, welcome back for the show, man. Thank you so much for being here. As always, uh, I, I kind of uh, thank you for having me back, man. Yeah. Well, I enlightened enlightened everybody by the fact that you and I can go off on tangents uh, of yeah. nerd of nerdiness, and uh, I already told them about the Star Wars panel we're gonna have. So we're gonna try to stay away from the Star Wars content tonight. It okay. doesn't mean we can't shoot the shit about other stuff. We can talk about family life. We can talk about... We're obviously going to talk about your comic. That's kind of a big deal. Um, but if anything happens to pop up or questions end up coming up into the chat, 
bring them up. We, we've got time. We have between, I mean, now and, you know, an hour. Yeah. It, yeah. Ish. I mean, Ish, that works you, good. I don't know if you have to put your kid to bed before, like, if there's that swing time or if your wife takes care of it. Well, my wife's got her right now. She's running around the house downstairs. She's a three-year-old, right? So mm-hmm. uh, she's actually running around and just screaming because she's great at it. And uh, we, it's, we're in the West Coast. We're in Vancouver, BC, uh, specifically Richmond. And uh, it's 6.30 exactly right now as we're recording this. So in about an hour-ish, we'll have our settle down time so we'll be good i mean plus i did like i said in the off camera i did make dinner in half an hour so i kind of think i earned a little bit of mm-hmm. time here so boom boom mm-hmm. whoa, and, whoa. and can you explain what you made again tonight because it sounded fantastic and I'll, okay, then i'll so tell you what i made for dinner okay. tonight <laughs> okay it's not so as I good made, i made something that's called orange fish and i call it orange fish i'm giving everyone the recipe tonight you get some white fish you get some orange juice you cook it, orange fish. But more specifically, salt, pepper, oregano, uh, throw in a bit of thyme, shot of olive oil, a little bit of garlic, throw in some um, uh, uh, white wine. Yeah, cook. start cooking down onions and garlic. So I probably pull it off and put a, all the fish in the pan with the juice, cook it down, let it reduce. Once it's reducing, add that onion back in there, cook it down a bit more. Throw a shot of like uh, a brandy or whatnot. We have a Brazilian liqueur called uh, cachaça here, and I throw a little bit of that in there and let that all reduce. Cook it with some like um, roast potatoes on the side or some green beans. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Orange fish, boom! It's delicious. You, you, it's, women have mouth orgasms. Men have mouth orgasms eating it. They go like, Oh boom, my like that. god, that so, is fantastic! So if I ever come visit, um. We're getting, we're having orange fish. We're eating, dude. We eat like it's. I love. I like. To, I like to. I like to cook, and I'm experimenting with a bunch of new things these days. So, it's we like to eat here. That's so, yeah. fantastic. I'm. I'm all done. I'm. I got. I'm a little. I got a little heaviness. To, I mean, I'm not. I'm not big by any means. I mean, I'm broad, and I, you know, I'm two twenty. So I'm six two two twenty. I'm not a small guy. Yeah, I'm, but you're six two, so you kind of make it work. You know? Right. Yeah, five I'm, six and I'm, it's like I'm broad. Two, I can be through 20 so easily it's but you funny. have all your hair <laughs> I do That's I do not I do all not right. my hair is gone it is it's it is gone gray. well Man, it's, it's gray it's white hair everywhere I found white armpit hair who the hell grows white armpit hair I don't know it's just weird I, I mean I, I'm not gonna I can't disagree with that I've yet to find a gray armpit hair don't um, bother looking. You'll just dis- you'll depress yourself. Well, with my thing, I, my hair is going back. Like I'm losing a battle up here, but it's not like falling out and then it's going. It and it's in like it's just not coming back. It's it's showing up in other places on my body. So there's there's a disgustingness to it that my <laughs> wife has to deal with, and God bless her for being such an amazing person that she's just kind of like I love you anyway, and I'm like uh, that's amazing because I you're I, a, you're a yeti. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I'm not like like super hairy or anything, but you know, you'll be like, I found a hair in my ear, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know, I know. And that and was gray. It's just this one weird one that has this weird corkscrew to it. So what the hell, man? I jeez. Sweet Everyone's God. watching this is going, what are these old guys talking about? But like, no, everybody watching this is usually people that are publishers or creators, and they're all doing the same thing, that we work during the day, and then we'd create comics or publish or do whatever at night. So they're all yeah. nodding their head is really what they're doing. Yeah, and e- that's what I do. Yeah, and even some of the other women are like, hold my beer. Because <laughs> it's like... They probably got stuff going on that's that's completely different. So <laughs> anyway, so what I made tonight... Yes. Is I make, from what I've been told by multiple people, the best hamburgers they've ever had. Uh, and because they are, regardless of how long you cook them, they could be medium rare all the way to well done. They're still juicy. Really? And that's hard to do. Yeah. Um, and what I do, I'll tell everybody, I don't even care. I, I, I don't, that's fine. So what I do is I almost make it like a meatball. It's yeah. it's it's halfway into a meatball. It's it's almost like just the tip. If you're playing just the tip, it's just the tip of meat of making a meatball, but not. 
So you can take that however you like. And <laughs> so what I do is I take like two pounds and I don't use beef. I use turkey because it oh. actually it's better to use turkey with this the way I do it. Um, I mean, I, you could probably use beef, but beef I've used beef and the grease from the beef kind of throws it off and it burns it. So I found that turkey is a little bit easier to use. Anyway, so I take this and I put for every pound, I put an egg in a raw egg. And, yeah. then, and then I put normally if I'm making meatballs, I put in a whole bunch of like breadcrumbs and other stuff. What I do is I basically leave out all the other stuff, put in a steak seasoning and then I put half the amount of breadcrumbs I normally would to make uh, meatballs. Okay. And then I make them just like normal patties, but I make them super thick. And I do not press down when I'm cooking them. So I get my grill to like 650. Ah. And I don't press down. And I let them cook. And I keep flipping. So anybody that's like, I only want one one set of hash burns on, on you know, grill tagging or whatever the hell they call it on either yeah. side. Well, you're... I'm sorry that I'm not that professional, but, um, I don't press down. So I do, I only do one flip and then I put cheese on the top when it, when I think it's, I'm sorry, I do two flips. I flip it once, flip it over again. And then where you'd get a second burn mark, I put it or the cheese over it, let it melt, take it off, wrap it in tin foil, but you have to like put a toothpick in it so that it doesn't, the cheese doesn't stick. Okay. Leave it for five minutes. And when you take it out, um, it is beyond, beyond juicy. I, it's the first I've ever heard this way, and even using turkey meat for it. If, I'm fascinated if, by if, it. If, if you come this way, I will hook you up. We're going to have to make it a trip just for that exploratory trip. For bring your comic. wife, bring your kid. I got a seven-year-old. They'll have a okay. great time. <laughs> hey, Cross, what's up? In, interview simulator. It feels like an interview simulator. It really does. I haven't been on interviewing in a little while. Dre Daniels is the last person I interviewed like two weeks ago, right before Christmas. So anyway, we, we've got, let's, let's talk actual like business, I guess. Um, I mean, it's business for you and me. It's not really business for everybody else, but we like talking about it. Um, it's not even business. It's, it's what we like. It, it's our passion. It's, our it's a passion. So when we had you on before, we had talked briefly about we talked actually in depth about Black Project. Um, yeah. Black Project is up on spinwizcomics.com. Uh, it's a fantastic book. I'm going to let you give a, a short pitch to it. I already put the link in there in case you guys want to read it. Issue one is ready to be read. It's free. Go read it. Show our boys some love. It, uh, just go read it. And plus, for every page that you read, you get entered into a giveaway every month anyway. So why the hell wouldn't you read it? Uh, it's just more reasons to actually read freaking read it but besides yeah. that um Bula, i want you to be able to kind of give them a short synopsis of what we're dealing with because you do it better than i do well, and then okay. and then let's talk about that kickstarter and i'm not going to drop the kickstarter link i'm going to keep them in suspense even though they're probably okay. all googling or going to kickstarter and just searching for it right now well let's hope they do so let's hope they do so the, basically black projects a story i started uh creating loosely 20 something years ago, but only took it seriously about five years ago in 2014 now, late 2014, early 2015. And instead of making it as a film script, I decided to create it as a comic book graphic novel series. And Black Project is basically Stranger Things meets The X Files. Mm -hmm. So, when, uh, if you really want to know like a basic synopsis, and it took months to figure this part out. Took months to figure that log line out. This that pitch, the elevator. It's pitch. still fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I'm so happy I figured that figured out those things. It takes months, right? But the uh, the, the basic synopsis is about a simple teenage boy, uh, and he's bullied at school. And when he's bullied at school, he unknowingly sets off a genetic trigger in his body that alerts these men in black called agents of Nexus, and they're the people that basically created him. So now he's a danger to everyone uh, around him and to himself, and he's about to discover how deep this like rabbit hole goes and goes into a world of secrets and shadows. God, and I love it. Black Project. Can, can I read the synopsis for Chapter 1? Yes. Okay, you ready for this? I'm going to try to go all like voiceover. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 1, Mechanism of Change. A meteorite rockets through the atmosphere and lands on a secluded highway, landing near a truck en route. 
as a mysterious retrieval crew arrive to obtain the object and clean up what's left behind, an object starts to move and suddenly attacks the crew, killing them all. Our story picks up 15 years later, and we find Jack, a normal boy who's pretty much a nobody. But after a shocking incident at school, Jack unknowingly triggers off a genetic alarm alerting the Nexus, who sends one of their inhuman agents to retrieve him. Now, Jack is tickling is a ticking time bomb on the run, hiding from Nexus and dangerously unable to control his newfound abilities. The Nexus, with unlimited resources, are not far behind. Their leader being the key to controlling Jack's abilities and are more than determined to reclaim their lost black project. The Fugitive meets the X-Files, meets the Matrix, meets Stranger Things. This is Black Project. It'd be funny if he was a tickling time bomb. I know. You I, know? I, I Now that you say that, I kind of feel like I missed on something. I, f- like, I felt that he was 13. It could be tickling, too. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's a hormones. Yeah, I think so too. Usually, the, always the hormone comes out there. I, I tried you to know? give you, I tried to give you the hotness, but the couple people we had watching left. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, my voiceover talent needs oh, needs work. They'll come back. Mm, yeah, that, well, that's why we have YouTube. Yeah, that's why. That's the thing. It's like you make one thing, you repurpose it for something else, for something else, for something else. Okay. Well, at nine forty Eastern, you know. Oh, well. Is everyone watching that stupid glo- Golden Globes? I had no idea it was on. Do people watch that? I don't know. I don't. Even, it's like it, I think that it's just like everyone's drunk and they're they're on TV. It's like wow, mm-hmm. that's a shocker. Yeah, Met, uh, actors are are you know are going to have a lot of DUIs tonight. You know? Oh, they're all hammered and high anyway. Like it's they're ridiculous. they're just trying to get through it, like trying to smile enough, so they're all coked up anyway. They're like, hey guys, yeah. I mean, you know, cool. you know enough actors. I, I, yeah, their actors are uh, a crazy bunch. They're a special, um, we're, special we're a breed. Bunch. Yeah, we're a crazy bunch too. We are. We're just not rich like they are. Yeah, I mean, like at the same time, like you know, you have to be some sort of crazy to be an actor. You have to be some sort of crazy to, to do comics as well and make your own comics and you yeah. go as far as it's gonna go. And it's like it's kind of funny that when you go out to create something like this. And then something like you create with Spinwinds online for distribution, it's it's kind of like we're kind of disrupting how things actually have to work. Mm-hmm. And when you have to, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it takes a disruptor to make people understand what's going to be the new normal. I mean, the biggest uh, hotel company in the world isn't Hilton, it's, it's Airbnb. They don't own a single room. Yep. Uh, the biggest cab company in the world is Uber. Right. They don't own a single car so on and so forth so it, it, you have to be crazy to do this you have to be crazy to act and, and i'm telling you there's that's a different breed but mm-hmm. I'm holy yeah. smokes yeah. yeah i know actors and they are mm-hmm. they're good people yeah of course they're good people but they have got a different screw loose for sure oh, they, yeah. although we do too i mean but that's the thing we all do that the creatives do. Like, I mean, I just discovered I got some sort of weird ADHD happening. So, uh, so and, and it's like, wow, my attention deficit is in high definition. So that's really cool. Mm-hmm. That's what I say too. <laughs> it's yeah. super cool. So, Everything's in HD. <laughs> so back to Black Project. Oh what, yeah, that too. <laughs> what we have we have chapters two and three also yeah. up on the site. What are we getting into with this Kickstarter? I'm going to drop this Kickstarter link in here. What what are we kind of jumping into here? What so, do people what do people get? Why the hotness of the Kickstarter? Well, the hotness for this Kickstarter is that uh, everything that you get on Spinwiz was created from me from front to back. Truth. Except we want the book to really stand out in the print marketplace as well, and I did a lot of research and I did a lot of learning in the last year. And I was able to do a lot of communication out there, networking, that I was able to get Hugh Fleming to come on board and create mm. this. So this is the print copy. Would you look at that Black sexy print? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this it really, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So I need to have that queue up. I'll queue that up next time. Yeah, totally. So basically when it comes to the print copy, uh, We've created a, a really stunning cover. We had a lot of communication between me and Hugh, Hugh Fleming, who's based in Melbourne, Australia. And I also reached out to Hugh Fleming because I've been a huge fan of his since his Dark Horse 
covers for Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. I literally was going to the comic shop just to buy the next cover with his work on it, not for anything else, right? So the fact that being a huge Star Wars fan and being able to hire a Star Wars artist to do my covers, it's just, it makes it stand out in the marketplace and, you know, how you kind of like, you know, when you said your thing, I should really go back and change some of the, the, the synopsis on chapter one there on your site. Because I, I, I always start with the Matrix meets the Fugitive meets the... And I had to really rework everything to go, oh, it's, the, it's Stranger Things meets the X-Files. And, and pare it down and shrink it that way. It's like, it's this much. Mm-hmm. And uh, with that cover, we get that. And so when you get this cover, I'll just do this here. If you don't mind me stepping out. When you get this book, you're going to get... This poster. Mm-hmm. So with it. Now we're All right. From, yeah, we're talking to our, yeah, when we talk with our uh, printer in uh, with uh, we're speaking with uh, Comic Impressions in Florida, and they're actually they're, they're handling all of the stuff for us right now, including the shipping and distribution within the United States itself. I'll be taking care of the shipping and distribution within Canada. Um, Anyone in Europe would want it. Um, I am offering a digital incentive for them to get onto it uh, so they can get the digital editions because they might not be able to get a version of, of whatever it is that they want to read off of. But they'll get a nice high quality PDF. You'll only be able to get this cover in P- uh, for the PDF version through the crowdfunding campaign. But okay. we do offer, I mean, the only difference between the print copy and what you have on Spinwood's Comics is the cover uh and there's just the cover uh black and white versions of it and the sketch version of it at the back of the book for the back matter mm-hmm. uh, other than that it's virtually this lettering's the same everything there's no there's nothing different there's no story editions or anything so uh for the early bird rewards we only have 10 of them on uh kickstarter if i take a look right now for the early bird reward I'm we actually right now, have uh, four left for a free poster. So, uh, and then after that, it's just, you'd have to buy the, the, the regular thing. So we've come back to Kickstarter. So, uh, cause last time we spoke, we were pushing the Indiegogo campaign mm-hmm. and we were doing an Indiegogo campaign. We want to raise a certain amount of funds so we can get going with some printing. And, and we, we hustled, we had to hustle. It was a lot of work, but we were able to actually come within our budget and come above the budget by a few hundred bucks where basically that pays for all of your um, crowdfunding fees and taxes there. So we're really happy that we're able to push ahead and, uh, and hustle. It's a lot of hustle. Oh, just to get that. It's, kick, it, yeah. 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 The Kickstarter is the hustle anyway. Yeah. And, and then and it's then, a hustle on top of a hustle. Yeah. It literally is. It feels like, yeah, just tell me what, you know, I'll, 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 I'll totally support you. It's like, okay, great. I'm waiting, and it's like, so look, you said you're going to support it. Are you or are you not? Just not, you know, don't tick them above. You know, you do it or not. And, and they're like, no, 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 just show me where the link. And go, look, this is what you're pressing. And, you know, this is where the hustle comes in. It's like, told the guy I'm going to bake him lasagna. Literally. I love it. I'm going to make this one guy that works with me a lasagna for, for that's the hustle. It's like, look, you're going to get this from me personally because you know me. <laughs> but I need to hit. I need to hit that mark, you know. Everything mm-hmm. else is like whatever. But as long as I hit that, you show that you've got like a successful crowdfunded campaign. So then we got done. And we're speaking with our printers. We're getting our trading cards done. As you can see behind me, and I'll bring it up close. This is the artwork for one of our trading cards. By- I've, I've seen it online. Yeah, this is the original acrylic board. Uh, for what we call revenge. And this is really quite appropriate for uh, Black Project as well. We did some slight enhancements so we can make the, the logo pop at the bottom for the for the, for the the artwork. And basically my buddy came in, he's also an, uh, Anil Sharma, he's at Space Hindu 73 on Instagram. And he's basically a top Star Wars artist for their card sets. Holy so crap. Whenever, so when you get one of those cards, you get 
one of them by Neil, and his artwork actually goes for about 200 bucks on eBay. Mm. And, you, and what I didn't know is a lot of these guys, they just draw shit. I got a ton of these cards, and they send them all to Lucasfilm and Tops. Then they approve which ones they want, and then they send back the ones they don't want. That's the ones they sell on their own Etsy stores, and you'll never get some return. Oh, I can't imagine that he does. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy that, you know, I mean, it's, it, his stuff is stunning, and he's even done, like, gauche paintings on like, that big. It's like Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting on the lava. I'm like, my God, dude, how did you do that? Like, and it's tiny. The detail is insane. That's you know? nuts. And, and you yeah, actually so, know him? Like, you're friends with him? For, like, 25 years, dude. We used to go to the same comic shop together. We Gosh, actually worked at the same comic shop. That blows my mind. It's all hustle, right? He hustled to get to to the card sets. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of his, I don't know if you have the Star Wars Galaxy card set that came out like in 2018. One of his pieces was actually reproduced as a regular set of those cards. Damn. Instead of an original. So it's one of, uh, of Rex from the Clone Wars. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, that's his. So his, <laughs> it's, it's amazing that, you know, that, that got out there. So. We've got those rewards being going through. We've got the prints getting ready to go through. We've got the posters getting ready to go through. They might not be as big as that, mainly for shipping. So they might be 11 by 17, which is just a perfect size. It's just the same, as big as those free Paul Shipper posters they gave at Rise of Skywalker IMAX screenings just recently. So it's, a, it's about that big. So you get a poster about that big with Hugh Fleming's art. If we reach higher tiers if we go over our asking on kickstarter i would like to make that as a poster but i would like to sell that as a poster later as well hell yeah uh we got po we got artwork from mass max moda from italy if you look him up max moda or massimo moda on facebook his artwork is stunning and he graced us with a, a beautiful picture for uh, chapter one as well so we're doing all this stuff we got kit we got our indiegogo funded we got all this done then it's like, oh, we got to rest a bit. Then there's this opportunity to come on Kickstarter for the Make 100 campaign. And uh, Kickstarter promotes their um, event, Make 100, very heavily. So try and get 100 backers or sell 100 products of, of, what the, of whatever it is. And I'm like, you know what? Why not? Because it's like, it's like where do you go buy shoes? What shoes did you buy? last what brand is it? i bought running ones called ta uh, tapos okay all right i know so, that i said that didn't help how about adidas i went to i you know i got them from zappos okay all right is that easier so, so basically could you go anywhere else to get that or do you only go to zappos for that shoe zappos has the best prices i mean i'm not paid by zappos by any means but zappos usually okay. has the best prices but you know what I'm saying? It's like, or those other running shoes that you bought. Those are like specialty Those shoes. are specialty, yeah, because I'm getting old. And well, yeah. So so am I. And, and where did you go to get those shoes? Uh, a specialty store. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you go to another place and never go to that specialty store, but you want those shoes, I'm pretty sure they're going to find their way into that store because they don't sell shoes to one store. True. So I'm like, I can't sell shoes to one store only. So if they were coming to us on Indiegogo, because there's a big comic audience on Kickstarter, yep. we're going to go to them and offer that to them as well. So that's why we went back to Kickstarter. And we're, we're doing okay. You know, we didn't ask for that much, but it was also a goal I know I could reach. And at the same time, I wanted to at least expose ourselves to the market there. And anyone who gets the book, you know, they're not waiting to get the book completed in any way. It's at the printer. Once we hit our mark of 500 Canadian or it's three something American, basically, once we hit that mark, you're going to get your book to, like sent to you within weeks, maybe. Damn. Uh, as soon as, yeah. So, I mean, the turnaround is going to be very, very high, like very quick. So that's why we went to Kickstarter as well. We can get a few more orders in. And send it to our guys, uh, Rich, over at Comic Impressions, and uh, get it sent out there. And a lot, some people have gone for like a, the digital editions, which is just totally fine, mm -hmm. you know. But at the same time, it's like, 
a lot of people do want the print with the poster. So it's the incentive. You get a cool poster, you get a great book. So the digital edition that we're doing is kind of like, well, we might as well make this really enticing for people. So it's like five bucks a Canadian. What do you get? You get the book. What else do you get? We get you get the other ones as well in, in the sense of we're just going to give those to you right away. But it's like we, we have very limited time. We only have like 20 ish days left. Right. Twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five days. So and we launched five days ago. So it was kind of all right. Just click launch. So what we're doing is we're putting people on a pre order for chapter four, which is we're like that close. I mean, it's like so close now. I added like eight pages to it and made the flow so much better. So now we're like 110 pages for chapter four. So for the Kickstarter people and the Indiegogo, for anyone who supported us on crowdfunding, they're going to get a digital incentive there. So they're going to get the incentive of getting the fourth book as well. Uh, when it comes to stuff like, you know, the print book, you're going to get the print book. You're going to get your poster. Some people ordered the trading card. Some people ordered this as well. What we're doing for uh, digital is we do know that people want to digest the story right away. It's a great, fast way to do it. So we'll just do this for them like this in crowdfunding this way. But what if you miss the crowdfunding now? The question is, what happens when you miss your Indiegogo and your Kickstarter? How am I going to get Black Project? Yep. Where are you going to get it on SpinWiz Comics? And the best thing about getting it on SpinWiz Comics is, A, you're going to read the first one for free. B, the second one is like, what, like a couple bucks? It's like two bucks, yeah. Dollar like ninety-nine, bucks. I think. Yeah, and then it's like the third one's there. Yep, dollar ninety-nine also. Dollar ninety-nine. Guess what else we have on there coming out soon? And it's only on your site, on Spinless Comics. It's a short story that takes place right after Chapter 3. It's like 18. I love it. Yeah. It's so the that's in-betweeny. It's, it's, the, in it's the Rogue One of, yeah, uh, of stories. Yeah, it is. It is legit the Rogue One, but it's not as long, right? But, but just as good. Yeah, and well, yeah, I really like Rogue One. <laughs> like, someone asked me what order to watch them on Disney Plus, and I said, uh, start with Rogue One. Mm -hmm. It's actually a great way to start any Star Wars movie is that one. Yeah. Um, so basically, you're going to get that as well, but also we're going to make Chapter 4 exclusive digital on Spinless Comics when it's ready, because... Uh, you've got such a great infrastructure set up that we're not going to go to Kindle and we're not going to go to Comixology for a month and months and months and months and months. months. Maybe, at the, maybe at the end of the year, but we only really want to make it it's like more exclusive and special. And you know, you're a part of a crew, right? You're mm -hmm. part of this. You know, there's always that make my marvel and everything. And I'm like, you know, people are really trying to th rethink what the digital market is in terms of comics and i'm like it's about digestion it's about being able to absorb your media yeah, it's about and awareness think that, uh, it's a, you know exactly and we want to make people know that hey if you want it it's here mm -hmm. what's it take to get into it it takes a sign up like a buck or two that's and it. you get something awesome yeah and that's it i agree so, that's our plan. That's what we want to do for Black Project with SpinWiz. And I really just don't want to waste my time with that. But Amazon, honestly, it's, it's no, a big it's a, I, Yeah. It's, they're quite the headache. If you F have those to guys. Deal with That's what I say. Well, I mean, I bought that thing. Yeah, but I mean, them, so I, mean cool. I, I like, but, like them, but when it comes to comics, F those guys. I, you can't use it. You can't use it. They're not, they're not comic friendly. Mm -mm. No, yeah. I have an announcement coming up in February that's going to blow everybody's damn mind. So... It's not about what you have going on, but uh, well, I can tell you just it has to be off air because you're under yeah, that's you're you're under NDA. The people yeah, watching this are not under NDA, um, so yeah. eventually I will I'll tell you after. But and uh, cool. so for the Kickstarter, please note that we don't do print yet at Spinwiz Comics. We um, we do digital only right now. Everybody knows that in February we are starting print on demand. But that will be a slow process to make sure it works properly, to make sure things are shipping properly, et cetera. So, you know, hook Buen up now because if, if you want print, get it through the Kickstarter because you will get that print long before we have print on demand ready or that we start taking print orders. Um, so get it now on the Kickstarter. The, the links are over there. Bam, I will send you an NDA. Yeah. I have yeah. people in the chat asking for NDAs now so they can find out what's going on. <laughs> I can um, see their Bam GG. Mm -hmm. Bam GG is the man, too. 
I mean, I'm calling yeah. him out right now. He's one of our biggest supporters. He's always on the site. He's fantastic. Um, you, you know, just so you know, I signed so many NDAs. It's like my my middle name should be NDA now. Where mm-hmm. it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, I you don't even want to know how many I've signed. Oh, it's horrible. Like I once signed one that thick. It was longer than the, re- signing that was longer than actually working on the show. Uh, well, yeah, you do a lot of shows. That's why. Like, yeah. they're, they're super crazy about letting stuff out. I mean, my NDA stuff is business. Or if I get signed on as a consultant, yeah, then those are different. Those are this thick because they yeah. don't want you doing anything. And, like, I get it. I, I completely understand. But, I don't like, I'll read them. And as long as they don't say that they own any part of me, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Like, it yeah, just exactly. you, you look for that one piece that just makes sure that they can't screw you. If they take exactly. one of your ideas, because that's what they're paying you for, which is fine, but that they, yeah. they can't say, hey, you, anything you talk about going forward after working with us is ours, because that was in one of the ones that I went through. Oh, really? And I was like, you're drunk. Like, I, yeah, I had, they know, said, it doesn't mean that. I'm like, it says it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, that's how EA is. I still can't show anything I did for EA. It's been four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bam brings up a good point that NDAs are like Fight Club. And you just yeah. you just don't talk about Fight Club. First rule, exactly. Fight Club. Don't talk uh, about Fight Club. Contractual Fight Club. I'll write this down. Mm-hmm. I met Bam in Fight Club. Not that there is a Fight Club, but I, I met him there. Can't talk about it. Can't talk about that. So let's talk about some other stuff that we have going on. Um, because you have yeah. an interesting background. And that I, I yeah. think people okay. need to understand that you are, an, and I'm going to say this in, in the, please take this as the nicest way possible you're an oddity in the comic book market and that you wrote it, you wrote this comic, you drew it and you lettered it. Yep. So you're end to end. And that's why you can do all these cool things is because where a lot of people are spending, you know, anywhere from a hundred to $500 a page, you get to soak all that. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. You spend that, that time doing it all. Like that, that's why yeah. it takes you so long to bring a new one out, but it looks fantastic. But for people that didn't see your last interview real quick, you have a background in cinematography, correct? Uh, I worked in film. Uh, I actually got emails to go back to work on Nancy Drew as a storyboard artist. And, and what we do basically is we draw the show before they go film it. And this helps them figure out how they're going to go ahead and, and work within the work within their locations, work within their crew, work within their cast, work within uh, locations and lighting and all of that stuff. So it becomes a visual Bible. So basically I draw comics for films. And when you say that, you know, I wrote this and I I did write this and I did create this, but I also have my buddy and he gets full credit there as well for dialogue writing, uh, Josh Whittall. So Josh, he was now on vacation with his beautiful family uh, out in Hawaii. I hope they're having an awesome time. Um, he actually has been a, a, a writer and a filmmaker as well. And he has now stepped back from the filmmaking and he just is working on a regular job now. But now what he does is he's working on writing. So I constantly get in with a bunch of friends that are doing their own writing. I go, this is your wake up call. And I text them in all caps to get back and keep writing that story. I want to read mm-hmm. only because I want to read it. So I'm kind of pushing him to do it. So Josh, I, I, I was talking to him, I go, you know, I just have this problem with this, the high school scenes. And I go, you know, I know all this weird, crazy, you know, bad guy stuff and the action shit, but I need help with, like, the Degrassi Junior High dialogue. Can you help me with that? So he came on board and he nailed it. And I said, how about some of this stuff for Chapter 2? Then he nailed that, especially in the, like, the final page of Chapter 2. And um, don't want to spoil it, but you got to read it. You know, mm-hmm. final page of chapter two. Mm-hmm. And those were all his words. And I was just like, I just called him out on you, man. I'm like, what did you do to me? I'm not crying, you're crying. It's like, <laughs> you know. And then and then for chapter three, it was a lot of back and forth with him and the main character there, with the our, uh, main character Jack, and with the uh, other main character, the uh, antagonist, Amon. And we basically needed to kind of like, well, what does this guy like? What does he feel like? What's he sound like? What's he t- you know, what's his clothes taste like? We have to kind of create a whole new character of that. 
And I kind of drew him a certain way, but then Josh really gave it a real a voice that way. And and then I just basically would go and take all of that what he would write, and I would re-edit this, and, and then I would do the editing. So I don't get the credit for editing there. You know, I don't get the credit for the publishing of the back-end office stuff. I mean, I am literally making all of this stuff on my own because it, the thing I need to do to get this story to come to life. And mm -hmm. I could go and hire an inker and a writer, and a lot of other people need to do that, and that's fine, but they have to raise the money and, and, and pay for that. I can't actually do that. So when everyone asks, how did you make a 70-page comic book? Well, how long do you take for lunch? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I do at lunch. Yeah. Is I work on my comic. Times 250 mm -hmm. days. Yeah. And then times, then times, then times. So it's, it's yeah. one of those, it's one of those insane things that like, you know, I, I came to realize that I have 400 pages now of, <sighs> of comic book and, and, and chapter, like I mentioned, chapter four is it's taken almost two years to finish simply because it's it is one of those uh it's my kid having too way too much fun that's all right kids are supposed uh, to no. have fun she might, she might just run in now it's just that's fine she can make it she can make a cameo yeah, i know i know she's just she's just we're family friendly uh, ish let me see if she'll want to come on see bring the kid on i got kids bam's got kids mr amazing does not have kids if he does yeah. i don't I, so, I don't know who's yeah. there but what wife just took her to bed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah hopefully she's not upset with me too be like you're supposed to be off by now you're supposed to be putting her yeah. to bed i mm -hmm. know but we'll put her to bed so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll do that we'll have to close this out soon so we can we're almost that, so. we're almost done anyway um yeah so so basically if you're gonna work on something you gotta yeah you put everything in but man it's a learning it's a learning curve but uh, all i know is, is that when I do this, I do want to work on chapters five and six and really mm -hmm. make it really expand it more. Maybe make it about a hundred pages each as well, but at the same time start another series. But in that sense, I would want to not do the, all the work myself. I would want to be the writer and, and the editor for it. And I got an artist that I've been speaking with. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you, I don't know if I've sent it to you um, before. It was like a, preview comic we did we got 10 pages of it ready mm -mm. you didn't uh, send it's it basically i didn't no no okay i'm gonna send it to you i love it you, you give NDA it a for the win oh yeah but I, i'm not even talking about because you know bam gg is getting to be a bit too close that i can see in the chat bam, uh, bam knows his ndas yeah. you, if you knew what yeah. he did in his real job you'd be like eh, it's fine okay so yeah, basically that's kind of like what we're doing, and yeah, we are. We, yeah, it's. A, I, I don't know. Not many people are doing as far as I am, but even reaching out to their comic book heroes and asking them to do their covers too. It's it's like, you know, it's it's a big deal for me to mm -hmm. to get it this far, and you know, now it's time to share it with everyone, and uh, that's what the Kickstarter is for, and that's what Spin Wiz is for. Um, but if you want to read it right now, man, you can read it right now on Spin Wiz. Got the links in the chat. Order, yeah, and if you want to own the print, you go to the Kickstarter. It'll be out to you by May, before way before, way before May, most likely March. That's sick. That's amazing. And you know, going back to that, a lot of people are pinging me and like, hey, um, I give out Chimera when people ask. Like, I'll my comic is called Chimera, and I give it yeah. via PDF if they want it. And the next thing they say, and I've been lucky that, and it maybe they're just being nice, but normally nice doesn't happen this much and they're like so when's issue two coming out that's what they say is the response and i'm mm -hmm. like i need five thousand dollars because i'm the writer and yeah unless you want it in really shitty stick figures um instead of the beautiful looking stuff that you have so um yeah and with spin with being as busy as i am right now because i've put a lot of my writing on the back burner to make sure that i can give my time to publishers like yourself and updating the site and making sure that you have all the tools necessary to succeed on our site, um, that I've kind of put everything. Oh my God, my video just went bonkers. You, you for whatever for whatever reason. Um, oh my gosh, you're huge. Um, That's what she said. Ah yeah. Um, Skype had like a bad. It looks like Skype. Minimized yeah, I noticed you. It kind of shrunk. Yeah, I'm gonna put you back. Thank you, Bam. Bam, 
God bless you. You, you. I'm getting. I'm sending you an NDA because you, because you helped me out. Um. So as much as I would love to do my writing, because I have Chimera and I have three other yeah. titles that are ready, or that I could put an yep. issue number one out for, and I just I can't get myself. There's too much writing on Spinwiz as a site for guys like yourself to help everybody out that I don't feel it's beneficial right now to do that. Now, if somebody came up to me like, Hey, I will draw it for free because I love the idea and cut me in on a profit share. I'd probably be like, okay, like that doesn't take as much time. I already have issue two done. I, I got all this stuff done. I'd be like, yeah, all right. But th the chances of a, that person existing and B that person actually not sucking ass is like a diamond in the rough. Um, yeah. because they just, it, it does not happen much. So I, I, I'm going to have to pay for it, basically. what comes out. So everybody has to wait until Spinwood's comic skyrockets and uh, get ready at... Uh, I know, he is one. I told you, Bam. Uh, Bulent is one of us. I'm telling you. Um, so in February, things are going to... At the end of February, before C2E2, um, and yeah. then, then the months leading after C2E2, Spin, we're going to have some serious changes on the site that are going to benefit everybody. That's going to be super cool. But I can't talk about that yet because I can't talk about it, but it's coming. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's all about, you know, take, you can drop some hints, but at the same time, I mean, the full reveal, it's always great to have a full reveal. I mean, I held on to the cover for like months before I revealed it. Yeah. Dave, months. I want Dave Dorman to do the, the variant cover of Chimera number one when I relaunch it. You know what? And he'll do it. He'll, he'll do it, but I just from. I can't afford him. I know. Neither can I. He can kind of deal with him, but, but Emil got a drawing by uh, by Dorman for a ray with the lightsaber, and it was like 120 or whatever, just a simple pencil drawing. Because mm -hmm. yeah, it'd be 500 dollars. Because uh, Mr. Dorman, no offense, but kind of said 120 for me or something. He goes, yeah, I guess so. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, Dave Dorman's the man. Yeah. He is the freaking man. Anyway, it's, I've taken up. I've taken up a ton He's of your fantastic. time. I've met him. Well, thanks. I've met him once. Yeah, I told, we I both showed, have met him. I showed you those two posters I had, right? That are signed and numbered. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're sick. And uh, uh, he had canvas at uh, San Diego Comic Con. He had canvas prints for sale for like 150 or 200 bucks a piece. And awesome. I didn't have cash on me at the time, so I couldn't get them. And then by the time I came back, they had, they had closed down. That I'm like, mother. He leaves early too. I noticed that. Yeah. So I was like, so good. But uh, hopefully, C2E2 or San Diego Comic Con or New York Comic Con, I'll catch up with them again. And I'll just bring a wad of cash that I don't have that I basically, you know, just sold a kidney for. Well, I know. All I want to do is just buy art. That's all I want to do. It's, and it's, find artists. It's not, not healthy at I all. Know. Oh, I know. Bitch. Also, I, lots of Purell. Mm -hmm. Oh, I Purell. I, it is a constant stream of Purell on my hands. And that's it, the it's, only it's, time we can say that, and it doesn't sound gross. I was really glad that I, when I did Fan Expo in Vancouver over a year ago, I didn't get conflu. It was mm -hmm. bad. The first it thing was... we're going to give out for Spinwiz, the first tchotchke, is going to be Purell Spinwiz stuff. <laughs> like, I'm just going to I'm gonna have a big bag of it over my shoulder. I'm just going to be giving it out to people I meet with, be like, no, take this. Not because I'm sick oh or gross, God. but... It would be great is if you had it as a Purell backpack, so you're going to go like this, it pumps it into your hand. It's like an armature goes in, and you, and it's like this, and it connects to your arms when you go like this. Mm -hmm. It kind of like a web, it goes in, then you go like this, ah, then you can shake hands. Hey. Yeah. Hey. I like That's it. That's an idea. I like it. It's like one of those uh, bug sprayers. You should go Shark yeah, it's like one. It's one of the like those bug sprayers, but it's got Purell in it. And you just go, yeah. then you, yeah. yeah, just like that. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, oh God, I'm on the chat. Oh, geez, Man, this guy's awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. Any, so, so yes, I, I will say in February we are the our app is going to be launched. That I can say. Fantastic. That's and that, awesome. And that will help you immensely. So. Anyway, your daughter needs to go to sleep. I am don't you know. You can what... hear it, can't mm -hmm. you? I can't, dude. Yeah. I have, I, I have, I understand. Being a dad, I understand. But I wanted totally. to thank you for your time. It's always awesome to hang out with you. For those of you that want to see more Abulent, he, myself, Dre Daniels, and I, or well, I said myself twice, I guess. I and myself are the same person. And then a fourth person, TBD, 
um, are going to talk have a Star Wars panel. And we're going to talk about the latest movie. We're going to talk about Star Wars in general and nerd out for like an hour and a half. And it's going to be fantastic. And the main thing that people have to do is they have to be drinking while we do it. So you have to have some sort of alcoholic beverage or, it, damn right, or if you are in an area where you are allowed to um, partake in marijuana, you are welcome to as well. Um, I We don't have it here in North Carolina, so we can't. Um, and I federally, it's not good, but I'm going to say just do it off air. But I'm not, if you tell me, hey, I smoked instead of. You, uh, can't, you don't have to say what state you're in, dude. It'll be okay. You could, you could be in, and you could say you're in Colorado or Washington or, or Vancouver. And it's all good here, buddy. Yeah, but in my opening, it says from Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, well. I know. That's my you fault. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. We'll tell everybody to drink too so that good questions come up. Everyone partake in a delightful beverage. I mm -hmm. shall bring some sangria. I will be drinking um, either Dalmore scotch or I'll be drinking Basil Hayden's. Honestly, I'll be bringing sangria. There's a story about me and sangria. It goes way back for all the Star Wars movies where I would get people to bring me their bottles of sangria in the lineup for Star Wars for the prequels. And we'd all be in my line, people. It, we were all friends that night, drinking sangria on the stairs. Oh, my god! Waiting gosh. to watch these movies. Yeah. It was a party. We're going to save that for, for the panel, because I think best best Star Wars story. That's well, one of the stories I'll share. Mm -hmm. Boom. And my thing, it, I'm, I'm, we have to sign off because this definitely, uh, Skype has given me problems and it's adjusting my window because it's being a huge bitch. Um, yeah. But anyway, thank you again for being here. Everybody remember, if you want to see more Abulent, um, we're going to we're gonna do the Star Wars uh, panel and go check out the Kickstarter. Links are in there. Links are below. Go check it out because if you want print, this is when you get it because you're not going to get it from me for a while. Um, yeah, free Free poster and hook them up. So, thank you again. Hang on the line for me just for a second, so I could so I can uh, say goodbye to you off. And then everybody, I'm coming back. We're going to play a little team fight tactics. Um, so, bam, gear up, get in, and go tell uh, some of the boys that we're playing or girls. Oh, bam has a question. Yes, I missed the beginning. Is the comic novel oh. more so or uh, more so or long format comic? Comic novel a or. It's a graphic novel series. So the first book is about 65 pages, and the second book is in 70 pages plus. The third book is 30, 70 plus pages, and the fourth book is over 108 pages long. Mm -hmm. Bam, I'm going to give so it to we, you right now. I'm dropping it in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's we're doing, we're doing a big, but we're only doing six chapters, but it's taken a long time to get six chapters done. Mm -hmm. Well, when you do it yourself. Yeah, but also you want it done right. Well, you know, it's, it's my baby. It's my Star Wars. That's a whole nother discussion. All that's right. that's a whole nother discussion. So anyway, thank Thanks, you again. Man. Hang out for just a minute. I'll be right back cool. to you. Everybody, you hang out with me here. We'll be right back. Just give us one second.